Hey, what's going on everyone? So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be walking you through my process for creating Halloween pumpkins within ZBrush. Uh, it is October, the Lord's holiday is upon us, and I figured this is about as good a time as any to drop this video. So we'll start out by sculpting the basic form factor and shape within ZBrush. Uh, then we're actually going to bounce out to our iPad, Procreate, Adobe Illustrator. This is where for the face that we're going to be carving in the pumpkin, we are going to be custom drawing, tracing, and creating a vector shape for this thing that we can bring later back into ZBrush um, and, and make our pumpkin. So whether it's your first time using ZBrush or you're a seasoned vet, I tried to make this video so there's some tips and tricks that hopefully you can pick up along the way. And it's uh, it's super easy. So come make a pumpkin. Let's do this. Let's check it out. Okay, so we're gonna start with the sphere for our pumpkin. Uh, let's make this thing editable, and then we're gonna need to dyna mesh this before we start editing. So starting off, sixty four resolution is perfectly fine. We'll dyna mesh this. Um, now for creating the pumpkin, pumpkins have all those ridges and folds. I'm actually gonna go up to the transform menu up here, and we're going to turn on. Active symmetry on the Y axis, and we want it to be radial. So it's going to go from a circle all the way around our object. So let's grab our mask pen, and then from top to bottom, we're just going to create a line. Uh, this is basically just masking out a region that's going to be like the inner folds of this pumpkin. We also want to make sure that we're masking out the top and bottom circular regions. They're kind of like caved in a little bit on a pumpkin. Uh, so there we go. We have this like perfectly set up, eight different uh, radial count. Uh, so now I'm going to go back through turn that off and then just individually with my mask pen, I'm gonna paint on where I kinda wanna have some of these extra folds and ridges on a pumpkin, right? I want this thing to look super haggard. I want this pumpkin to look like it's next to a witch that's about ready to be burning some kids. Um, so this is perfect. So we're now gonna go over the deformation, drop down and inflate and inflate balloon. Those are the two uh, objects we're gonna be basically using to manipulate our, our, um, our pumpkin. And so what it does is any of the non-masked areas, it will inflate and then we balloon that out. And then we inflate a little bit more and we balloon that out even more. Um, just polishing and relaxing some of the geos once we did that to our 3D object. But you can you can see the, the base form is almost already there, right? Which is great. Um, so at this point, just kind of checking around to make sure it's looking the way that I want it to and uh, a bend curve. So a bend curve basically allows you to create points on a 3D object and you can bend it, you can taper it, you could bulge it. We're gonna use it to taper and bulge uh, the top and bottom parts of our pumpkin. You can totally go about this however you want, but I wanted the top of my pumpkin to be a little bit wider than the base. So I'm just like, selecting these points and again, bulging or tapering them. Um, and then once we get done, we will click on that little gear icon, hit accept. All of our changes are saved to our 3D objects. So super easy. Um, now I'm just kind of looking over it. It's looking good. So we're going to go back over to Dynamesh, super low resolution. But we're happy with it. So we're going to up it from 64 to 128. And then we click and drag out on our canvas. There we go. Now we've got more polys for, for our 3D object to edit. Um, so clay buildup, uh, keyboard shortcut is BCB. Use it all the time. I love this damn brush. We are actually changing a couple of the quick parameters for spray. And then the alpha, we want to put the circle uh, that's kind of gradient faded out. But what this is doing, as you see, is just creating all of those bumps on our pumpkin. Again, I want this thing to, to look haggard. I want this to just be an ugly, nasty, uh, just super graphical looking pumpkin. So I want boils, I want warts, I want everything on this thing. Uh, I'm also changing the brush size a little bit. So anytime that you change the brush size, if you make it bigger or smaller, that'll make uh, the bumps gonna be bigger or smaller. So just trying to create a little bit of variation in that. And this is just, this is painting. This is, you know, this is your Bob Ross moment right here. Just paint on what you think looks good. And, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with this. So now we have our pumpkin shape. We need to have the stalk, right? The stem of the pumpkin. I could put a cylinder in there. I could sculpt and mesh that, but I'm actually just going to use this base pumpkin shape that I created to create the stalk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm duplicating it, renaming both of my layers. Now for the stem or the stalk, moving this up on my canvas, we're gonna scale this way down and then elongate it on the Y axis. So we're just basically roughing out 
the size, shape, and placement for what a stem or stalk would be for this pumpkin, right? So this is just, again, editing on the y-axis. I like this placement. Um, now, when we think about that stem or stalk, it kind of has like these legs or uh, feet that kind of like go into the pumpkin, right? Where like the base kind of bulges out. That's what I'm working on right now. And so the way that I'm going about that is I'm uh, once again grabbing my mask pen and just masking out these small little areas on the stock, inverting that mask, and then using the move brush to move out those regions of the geometry, right? So this is just, again, no rhyme or reason, just whatever I think looks good. A lot of times I'll look at that top view of my model and just decide I want to have like a a foot, you know, towards the base of the stock on this part. And so that's just what I'm doing. Um, once I, you know, have all these in, in a good area, we're just kind of moving these down to push them into the top of the pumpkin. Looks pretty decent. I'm going to actually go to the top part. I want to just create like a little bit of inflated or bulged region at the very top, which you can see I'm doing right here. Um, and again, starting to get a basic stock shape. Now to really start to sculpt this thing, I'm going to go back to my clay build up, build up brush. I'm going to change the free hand and I'm going to put back to the original alpha, which is like the harsh square and just using the regular brush or by hitting alt on your keyboard to eat into the geometry. I'm just sculpting at this point. So this is really just me starting at the base, trying to uh, sculpt up, you know, the stock to the stem, kind of eating away a little bit in between some of the feet. Again, I, I want this thing to look a little old and, you know, haggard and corroded. Um, so it, it, again, paint, you know, this this is just you going in and doing as you please. No painting by numbers. You, you just get to go wild on this. Um, I also using a little bit of the trim dynamic brush, which is BTD for a keyboard shortcut, which this is basically just kind of like flattening out areas. So between the clay buildup, the uh, trim dynamic and just smoothing, um, th those are the tools that I'm using right now. I want to taper the top. It's a little bit, uh, too, you know, wide. So I create a mask. I blur that mask and then I'm able to kind of pinch that in. Now the spiral brush that I'm using right here is actually fantastic. So I wanted the stock to have a little bit more play, a little bit more flow to it. Um, I could have done a snake hook or I could have just used the move brush, but the spiral brush actually works great. So I just used that at the very top, created some cool little spirals in it. Now I'm just going back and just trying to fix um, just the look and feel for it, using the clay buildup, trim dynamic, and smooth those three brushes non-stop through this are going to get you through this uh, tutorial so i like the look of this guy i'm going to kind of just move and push and pull some of these polys around a little bit just to again get a look and feel that i'm happy with um now going back with the clay build up brush and actually changing back to that that spray and that gradient circle alpha just to create a little bit of like bumps and you know again kind of um just old and beaten up pumpkin stock right like that's all that we're doing is just trying to, to make this thing as look as dramatic and as nasty and radical as, as possible so pretty happy with this guy um so for the pumpkin itself we're going to go ahead and up our geometry from 128 to 256 so you see me drawing out right there on my canvas to up the uh, the polys on that um other than that, I mean, the again, the the base shape and stock is is done. The only thing I'm going to kind of do right here, which is not necessary, is once I have that that stem or stock in place, is I'll just use the clay buildup brush to you know wh where the stock kind of goes into the pumpkin. I might just want to build up some of the geometry a little bit just to make it look like it's more fitted into the object. And again, clay buildup, trim dynamic, smooth. That's all that I'm using right here. For those three brushes just to to add geometry um kind of smooth it out in certain spots and then kind of just eat and chip away at it with the trim dynamic um but but this is it again you just want a basic you know awesome looking halloween pumpkin from zbrush like here it is like this this is it um let's see what else do we got going on here just finessing a little bit more again since we upped the geometry for the pumpkin to 256 i just wanted to add some uh some extra bumps and again all these little like nuances a little bit higher fidelity since we have more geometry for the 3d object now um so i'm just adding those in i think that this looks pretty good right 
Looks great. Okay, Illustrator. Now we're bouncing over to Illustrator. So this was actually an image that I drew within Procreate. Super simple. Want to do something custom. Brought in Illustrator. We went to Image Trace, uh, which Image Trace is basically just going to look at the black and white values of your image. Grayscale a little bit too. Um, and you can create vector shapes from this. So I could have got the pen tool out. I could have hand drawn this. I didn't need to. There's no reason for it. So we image traced this, dialed in uh, the sliders the way that we wanted. Then we expanded it. And then we deleted all of the, the points that we don't need. And we just are sort of left with the face, right? So we select all of the, uh, the face points. We go over to file. We go over to export selection. Make sure an SVG is what you want to export. Export that out to your desktop. You're golden. We jump right back into ZBrush. We're going to go up to plugins. There's the uh, text 3D and vector shapes. Bring in the SVG that you just created, right? So here's our face that we just exported out. Now we have it directly within ZBrush. Now, the cool thing with this is I'm just going to kind of size and finesse the extrusion a little bit of this, but we're actually going to use uh, a Boolean to create the face within our pumpkin. So a Boolean at a base level is you have two objects. You can either combine those together or you can use one to knock out portions of the other. We're going to do the latter. So what I'm actually going to do is duplicate the original pumpkin that I created scale that down from inside. So I'm going to turn on transparency right here and you can see then we're scaling that original pumpkin down. Smooth this out. The inside of the pumpkin doesn't need to have as many bumps and ridges and everything on it. So I'll use a smooth brush. I'll go over the deformation drop down on the right hand side and relax, polish those polys. Just it doesn't have to be anything too crazy, but just to try to smooth it out a little bit. Um, so we're polishing those. So now if we go back to our subtool, um, both of these little UI items, you're going to see me clicking here. It almost looks kind of like a half moon. We're going to click on the face and the inner pumpkin. Um, and then we have to go up to render, render booleans, live boolean. And what those little half moon icons did is it's basically telling ZBrush that like, hey, all these items below our main pumpkin, we actually want to cut out from our main pumpkin shape. Um, and here you go. You have a face. Your jack-o'-lantern's done. Scare the shit out of all the kids coming for trick-or-treating right with this bad boy. Uh, so all I'm doing really now, finessing the, the inner layer of the jack-o'-lantern, like trying to create a thickness that I'm happy with, also kind of messing with the face. The cool thing about this with doing this as a bullion is like all of these things are editable. It's non-destructible. So if I want to sit there and edit the face or any of these things like that I'm doing right now or even just completely moving points or whatever... You can do that. Um, but at a certain point, once I have this in a spot that I like, I actually want to make a solid base uh, mesh out of this. So there's a Boolean make Boolean mesh option, which I just clicked. And now, as you can see, we have one solid 3D object, right? So it's no more of the Boolean objects. This is what I want because a lot of the harsh edges that we're going to find on this uh, 3D model, I want to go through and kind of smooth some of those out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to DynaMesh this actually. Um, I maybe could get away with not doing that, but for my purposes, it just, it helped because I was just, it, it just, yeah, it just worked. So I down this thing, kept it at 256, grabbing our smooth brush, grabbing trim dynamics. Again, those brushes will get you through this entire thing. We're just going up and down the edges of this bad boy and just smoothing, 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 redrawing our polys via down mesh with this thing by dragging out on our canvas. Um, but this is again. It's just going for a look and feel that I kind of wanted with this. I didn't want it to be quite as like as uh, as um, harsh of edges on some of the faces with this. So um, now that we're done with that, we are going to um, we're going to kind of polish and relax some of the polys a little bit. Um, there's also the uh, polished by crisp edges, which can work really nice sometimes, too. Um, but just kind of finessing some of those sliders to, again, get a look and feel that I'm happy with for for this pumpkin. So I, I think this is, you know, this is pretty great. Um, the next thing that we need to do is the top of the jack o' lantern, right? You got to cut this bad boy out. So we're going to do that actually via poly groups. So by using a mass tool, it's the perfect circle mass tool. You see me grab right here. We're going to go to the top view of our pumpkin, draw out a perfect circle. This is going to mask the top of our pumpkin, right? Um, now what we can do is we can go over to poly groups, drop down, we can select, uh, poly group, our group mass, um, and boom, there you go. 
the very top portion of our object now is that green region, which is its own separate polygroup. So the polygroups, we can basically collect that and or click that individually to separate it out from the other objects. But as you see, our polygroup has all these jagged little edges on it. So uh, if we go to Lightbox, Brushes, um, uh, smooth. There's a smooth groups brush, and right here I'm actually smoothing out the polygroup line. So all of the the lines that kind of create the initial polygroup. So we're not going to have any of those little jagged edges. I can smooth those out, which is fantastic. Love that. Um, so once we have that done, what we're actually going to do is we're going to duplicate that layer because um, we want to create the top part of our pumpkin, right? And so we don't want to. We, we're doing a destructible. Item, we don't want to mess with the, the Boolean full shape that we have. So we go on ahead, create the layer. We click Alt on the top of the polygroup. Um, then we can go down to Modify Topology, and there's a Delete Hidden. So all of those polygroups that we don't see, they are now hidden on our new layer. Um, but we still have this like top part of the pumpkin and then the very bottom. So to get rid of the bottom, go back to Polygroups, hit the Auto Polygroups button. Then we can click on the very top part, Delete Hidden again, now we have the top piece that we really want. Um, so we're going to want to extrude this thing out to kind of create, again, the thickness for the top of the pumpkin. Uh, the the geometry is a little, you know, jagged and a little rough, so we're actually going to remesh this thing. Uh, keep it pretty high poly count, so just click on the same button down there for the Z remesher, um, just because we don't want to lose too much detail. But then we go to edge loop, uh, and it is, it's a panel loop, right? Yeah, panel loop. So panel loop is great because you can set the elevation, bevel, you can do extrusion. We're doing a negative uh, elevation for this because we actually want this to elevate in. We don't want any bevel. Um, and what for thickness? I think it was like 0.08 that I ended up going right here. So we did that. Remesh this thing, smooth trim, just taking all those little edges out for the very top of this pumpkin. Um, again, it's supposed to look like it has a little bit of wear and tear. And so we're just trying to make this thing look a little bit more beat up. Um, so that's perfect. The, the lid is good. Now we need to actually create another Boolean to knock out where the lid would go in the pumpkin. So we had duplicated that original top layer an extra time. Um, it's, we wanted a little bit more thickness on this thing. That's what we did it. So we're going to go back to the panel loop, make this even more thicker. And then again, smoothing out, just kind of cleaning up some of the weird little rough edges. Uh, this is probably through inflate, uh, brush smooth makes it super super easy but now what we can do is this last one that we just did which was a thicker um, lid is we're going to boolean again that out of the pumpkin so what i'm going to go down to is deformation i'm going to inflate this a little bit so that it's a little bit thicker as you can see than the pumpkin head and then go back up click on the little ui icon it looks like kind of like a half moon there we go now we have a hole in the top of our pumpkin right and we can turn on our original lid we have our stock I, you're there like I, that that is the pumpkin um to a t um it is as simple as that we can turn on some fake lighting with bpr and uh it, yeah it's we're we're there with it um i'll probably go through on here a little bit with like the move brush and just kind of finesse the top lid you know again when you think about like cutting out a jack -o lantern top it's never going to be like a perfect fit and so i just want to kind of pull some of those regions up to make it look a little bit more believable uh, probably go back through here with the um, clay buildup since we have some higher polys on some of these items and it just adds some extra little bumps and bruises and you know items with that um, but for before I do that which I'm actually doing right now is we need to clean up some of this geometry so for Z remeshing these items what I'll typically do which I'm doing here is I'll duplicate the original item the new item that I just created is what I'll Z remesh so I'll go down Z remesh it I'm um, keeping a pretty high poly count on this thing. Again, it's it's not going to be too crazy to bring this into Cinema 4D. So, um, But we get nice, clean geos, which is really good. Make sure that keep groups is checked on. It'll kind of keep the existing poly groups that you had for the inside and the walls of your pumpkin intact. Um, and then once I have that new perfectly uh, Z remeshed um, subtool, I'll go back for the original one and the project all option down there is every time that I'll subdivide the new tool, I'll project all the original details onto the new object. So um, it's great with kind of saving some of that stuff. So I don't have to keep going back and adding all new bumps or little things. It'll, it'll kind of keep all those little like nuances that we built up over time. Doing the exact same thing here with the stock and the lid, duplicating it. Z remeshing this thing and then just projecting all of the details on it every time I re-subdivide the, the lid with the stock. Um, 
coming through here again adding like i was saying some of those extra little bumps and stuff with the lid just to give it a little bit extra pizzazz because we're we're again we're at the finish line at this point this is this is just the the icing on on the cake right cherry on the top sort of stuff uh but this this is the pumpkin that's it uh so i i really hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial i hope that you learned something um and if you haven't had any questions at all feel free to pop them down here in the comments uh again i know this went by super quick i just didn't want to give you a really long tutorial so appreciate it thanks